expectations going into the race versus realizations after <laughs> like what what did you think was going to happen and then what actually did happen like you're I'm sure there were many but maybe your top or favorite one you mean the Instagram versus real life yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, um yeah um you know I think the beauty of New Zealand like it, it definitely tricks you right? Hello, everyone. This is Hollywood Junket. My name is Craig Reese, and we have a great opportunity to interview two of the recent competitors from the second season of Race to Survive New Zealand. We have Stefan and Mikkel. Stefan and Mikkel, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be here. You too. You too. So um, uh, where do I begin? I have so much. Uh, first, Mikkel, we need to check on your leg, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the update on my knee. Um, you know, at first it was definitely not a good sign. Uh, but since then, uh, I would say we we're getting recovered. Um, actually I'm training for an ultra marathon in September. So I've been running on it and okay, okay. it's working. So all good there. Good, good, good. I play a lot of volleyball and, uh, I've torn my ACL. So when I heard you say snap, I was like, no, but glad to hear it wasn't that serious. That's awesome. Good. Yeah. I mean, it was $500,000 serious. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so true <laughs> well let's talk about this last episode um you guys had five days of downtime was that because of the rain yeah it was yeah. it was because of the, the rain um and the weather storms that were moving uh in new zealand um and it didn't help us uh you know no. <laughs> you know being the fact that we we, were, we had to hunker down there we did the opportunity for for acquiring food was pretty pretty much zero like nobody was catching fish nobody was really catching anything there so um being hunkered down in the wet cold and having no food did not did not help Stephanie yeah yeah we i that scene with the baby birds was actually pretty awesome <laughs> but um yeah i was gonna ask if there were any other prospects for food but it doesn't really sound like there was well, there there was one prospect, uh, not shown. Uh, there was one morning at survival camp where, um, you know, I was peeking out of the out of our tarp setup, and <laughs> the glimpse of my eye, I saw a rabbit just run across the field, and I said, "No way!" And I hurried up. I got, I barely got shoes on, and I just ran and tried to see where it went, and it really felt like Alice in Wonderland. It just <laughs> disappeared, and now I'm. Now I'm wondering, did I actually see a rabbit or was I just imagining it? But I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but also after a few days of not eating, you can't start. <laughs> <seeing>. <laughs> um, well, I still have one more kind of question about the food situation. You know, last year they were given portions. This year on your races, you have to take a longer detour to get it. Um, what do you think about this new rule change? And then also, were you two kind of planning on being able to hunt like in your like camp or like what was the kind of plan there? Um, yeah. We definitely, we definitely were planning on being able to forage for, for some uh, food. Um, you know, we had, we are, we're not foragers. Like that's not our strength, but we had done a lot of research and New Zealand does have a lot of opportunities for, yeah. for foraging. Um, we also thought fishing would be an option because there's so much water. Um, so um, you know, we were prepared for, for fishing and foraging. And, and like I said, it did, that just was not, it not just happening. wasn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't happening at, at, at survival camp, um, which, you know, uh, which hurt us. Yeah. And Mikhail, what are your thoughts about kind of this new rule and the new part of the game where there's a detour? Yeah, I, I actually love it because yeah. I, I feel like it brings so much of a, a new dynamic to the race. Um, nothing is really given to you. Yeah. And, and, and it, you know, it adds a lot of strategy and a lot of opportunity uh, to jump ahead or, you know, um, get some additional calories that that you get to earn. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think it makes the race a lot more fun and interesting in that way. And, you know, you can be maybe a stronger team, but if you're hungry, you know, you may have to stop and get that food, giving um, a slower team a chance to catch up. So I thought it was a great addition to it. Um, and I think it levels the playing field a little bit. I love that too. And I was literally going to follow that up with, I like that everyone starts at the same time, you know, makes it fair, gives people chances to catch back up. Um, 
Uh, what were some of the ways that you kind of planned on navigating those races? Yeah, I think our first strategy was first and foremost, not to fight with each other. Uh, we studied season one and we noticed that all the teams that did not do as well, they were always fighting or bickering. So we wanted to make sure that we were not going to do that. Uh, so that was strategy number one. And I think uh, strategy two was like we were prepared to suffer. Um, if it meant skipping food to try and get ahead, we were willing to do it. Um, it may have cost us uh, the race, but uh, I don't regret that decision. Um, yeah. Steph, I don't yeah. know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, well, well you know, at the end of the day, um, skipping food and, and our willingness to suffer is what allowed us to to complete the first race because, uh, you know, we could have easily been knocked out at that point. Um, and you're right. At the end of the day, maybe it hurt us, but, um, you yeah, know, that's, that's the cards we played. Exactly. Well, um, I definitely have questions about just deciding to leave and all that, but let's go a little past that. After you were done with the race, did you spend extra time in New Zealand? Were you able to explore? Did you learn anything? Can you give me anything about that situation? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so after the race, we, you know, for, first we had to kind of get over the fact that we weren't, we were, we were, weren't leaving with a, with a half a million dollars. Um, and then, then we drove down the coast. Um, New Zealand is incredibly gorgeous and it's, it's actually a great place to just go and explore. Uh, so we rented a car and drove down to, uh, made it down to Queenstown and, um, made a couple stops. Um, you know, we, we checked out the rock climbing, the kale couldn't climb because his leg was all was a little bust and he tried though. Um, and, um, yeah, we, we, we were able to kind of get, you know, get a little bit more, even though we were out of the race. That's yeah. awesome, though. Sometimes on these shows, you don't get a chance to explore. You're sent right home or you're stuck in a hotel. So that I am very happy to hear that, at least. Yeah, we definitely got I got an opportunity to stick around a little bit longer. Like I, immediately after the race, you know, we uh, made sure like all the like my we made sure that my knee was OK. We definitely mm -hmm. got checked out at the mm -hmm. local hospital. Good. We did all of that first. And then once we were all cleared there. Um, yeah, it was just up to us. We, we, we took a nice little drive around. Um, we couldn't do it as venturous as we wanted to, uh, because of my knee, but, uh, we made the best of it. You know, we were out there eating all the meat pies and, um, <laughs> just like looking at all the lakes and, and looking at the glaciers and things. Um, it was yeah. definitely a lot slower pace, but, uh, still an amazing trip and New Zealand is just gorgeous. Well, what was the first thing you both ate after, after finishing the race? What was it? Uh, well, we went to the steakhouse, so I, I wish I oh, remember yeah. the name because I I love to give him a shout out. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but we went to we went to a steakhouse. Uh, it was sorry, it was an Italian restaurant, um, and we got steak there. Uh, okay, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah was New it Roberto? Italian I don't. Steak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, it, the, it, we had scoped it out prior to the race, and. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> You know, we we're like, man, you know, when we get a chance, we're gonna come back, and that be that would be our victory meal. But it was our, <laughs> it was our our uh, goodbye meal. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um. So deciding on whether to continue with the race or not, what were some of the thoughts, the discussions? I mean, obviously, as as viewers, we got to see a little bit of that. But maybe what was the final um, point made? You know, that was like, yeah, it's time to time to call it. You know. Yeah. Um, well, I think going into the race, you know, our thing was we were not going to give up. That yeah. was our that was our main thing. We 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 if we were the last ones in, that's OK, but we would never give up. That was the plan. And, you know, once you get out to New Zealand, you'll see how treacherous the terrain can be and how unforgiving it can be. Um, so once I had hurt my knee on the descent, um, we were definitely moving a lot slower and we thought maybe we can get some food and maybe it'll recover. So mm. uh, we actually did hit the cash. We, we were able to uh, eat a little food um, and then we decided to continue. And um, I think you explained this a lot better because, uh, Stefan, uh, when, when you saw the yeah. boulder fall. Yeah, well, um, uh, you know, I'll tell from my perspective, like we we were hiking out of uh, it wasn't far from the from the cache, and we were hiking out of a riverbank, and it should have been a pretty routine uh, like uh, movement for Mikhail. And I saw the way that he was moving out, and 
there was a huge boulder uh, like about this big and and it it started rolling and what should have been a routine of him just kind of getting out of the way to protect himself I, he was he was struggling um and the boulder almost the almost boulder almost fell on him and crushed him and, um you know shortly after that that's when Mikhail came to me and was like I think I think I actually have to step down or yeah. I think we actually have to have to you know bow out and uh yeah I I after seeing that happen um I I, I really could not argue with him at that point because uh it became a, a matter of more than you know just his knee it's this is now his like his his livelihood you know it's, yeah, it, something it's, else you know. can happen because of it yeah yeah, yeah. And, we, and that's the last that's the last thing that we wanted you know and we definitely made a promise to our partners and uh, you know Stefan has his fiance at home we have our parents at home and we were like we promise yeah. to come back in one piece yeah. because we want to, we want a long life of adventure. And like one thing I always say is like the best athletes know when to throw in a towel and to live to fight another day. And, you know, I, I think I made the right decision there. Um, now I'm right now I'm able to train for an ultra marathon and just get ready for season three, season four, you know, I'm ready. Well, like literally what my last question was going to be, would you attempt another race like this again? The answer is I'm guessing yes from both of you. It's it's a hell yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah be... You know, because I you know I feel and I know Mikhail feels the same way. Um, you know, we we, we definitely uh, left something on the table there. So uh, the opportunity to go back and snatch it, I, 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 we we jump at it. Um, you know, and once Mikhail's back to a hundred percent, and you know now he's training, and and you know I never stopped training, so. Uh, we're ready we're ready as soon as as soon as we get the call yes oh yeah i'm super i'm super pumped i'm ready i'm getting training up right now and um you know if the opportunity presented itself you can call me call stefan yeah, stefan's gonna be the first person i call for this so yeah sign me up I'm i ready. think i think y'all are warranted another chance so we'll we'll see what happens <laughs> uh final question you guys um what was kind of expectations going into the race versus realizations after <laughs> like what what did you think was going to happen and then what actually did happen like you're i'm sure there were many but maybe your top or favorite one you mean the instagram versus real life yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, um yeah um you know i think the beauty of new zealand like it, it definitely tricks you right you think mm -hmm. it's just going to be paradise vacation and such an easy hike up these mountains, getting through these passes. And yeah, I think you don't realize how muddy those bogs can be, how deep those holes are. The big rocks actually move, you know, like in New York, they don't move. They, they stay still, not in New Zealand. They, they, they roll and they roll anywhere they want. Um, so I think that was one of the most unexpected things for me. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, prior to, prior to competing in, the, in this race, we, we had studied, the first season uh pretty well and i gotta say like i think they they really really turned it up this second season um so it was it was uh, it, it was a surprise um you know like we were expecting something tough and and i think we we were we certainly got that um but uh yeah, you know, like Mikhail was saying, New Zealand itself is just like so unpredictable, and yeah. it's just you know, it's beautiful and rugged at the same time. And that experience of just of, of just being dropped there, I think it was, you know, it was great and 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 also uh, humbling at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and 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 when they say elite athletes, um, you know, they're not joking, right? I think watching season one. Um, you know, we're, we were watching elite athletes take on a course and they made it look so easy. So going into the race, we thought, how, could, how bad could it be? Um, you know, we obviously train, but, um, you know, you definitely don't expect it to last as long as it does. And, and the days, they, they drag on. They're, it's beautiful days, but they are rough days. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Well, guys, I just think this show is so interesting and I think it's so cool you got to be a part of it. Mikhail, I'm glad your knee is better and your training. And I really do hope to see y'all back another season. I think it's warranted and uh, we would love to see that. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. yeah appreciate, appreciate it. Oh, yeah. no. Thank you so much for your time. Guys, again, this is Craig Reese with Hollywood Junket. 
Uh, we've got lots of interviews from other shows that we like to cover. But again, thank you for you both for your time and uh, hope all the best for you in the future. I can't wait to see what happens next.